All right, thanks for coming back for another lesson in this Wireshark tutorial. So we've already talked about in lesson two and lesson three how to capture with Wireshark, either within the user interface or on the command line. But now we're gonna talk about where to capture. So stick around. Okay, where do we capture the problem? This is a very common question when we're first getting going with packet capture. Do we capture on the endpoint? Do we install it on the server? Uh, really, where do we put it? Well, the answer has a lot to do with what the problem is and where we have access to on the network. So if we were capturing a problem of a single client that's having connectivity problems to a server versus a security incident that affected an entire region of the network, well, that would be two different points of capture. So we wanna have very clear in our minds what is the problem that we're trying to look at with Wireshark. After we get a good definition of that, then we can make a better decision about where to place Wireshark. So let's imagine that we're troubleshooting a problem that's intermittent where several users are having issues connecting to an application. So where would we put Wireshark in that case? Okay, so in this scenario, I'm just gonna draw it really simply on the client side. Here we just have a client and let's just say that that client is Wi-Fi connected, okay? As many clients are, um, even mobile devices or PCs anymore, that's often the way that they're connected. So I'm just gonna draw a little um, connection to an access point, okay? So right there, I'm thinking, okay, wireless environment, uh, there could be other users in that environment. That's just something I'm gonna consider. And how about we connect that access point to a switch and then from that switch, let's go to between a firewall or edge router. And let's just say from there, we're going up into our provider. All right, so that's more on the client side of things. Now, obviously in your environment, this could be much more complex, but let's just try to keep this simple. Now on the server side, ideally, what I'd like to see is some way to capture data over on that end. Now, server side gets tricky because now what kind of systems or networking do we have access to? Is this server in a data center that you control? Uh, can you actually get access to that server? Do you have access to the virtual network that it's connected to? Uh, what if this server is an instance within AWS and you only control that instance and nothing outside of it? So these questions will guide the capture points that you even have access to in the first place. So ideally, what we'd like to do when we're capturing a problem is I'd like to see the packets from the client side. And in this case, a good place to capture might be just inside that access point. So I can see this user and maybe a few others that are attached to it. And then on the server side, if I had the ability to tap or span in case I only have access to span and put my copy of Wireshark here off of that switch, that would be ideal. Even then it would also be nice to have another capture point, maybe even somewhere else along the chain, maybe off of the network. Let's just say I had a tap that was connected here and then I can divert that traffic off to Wireshark where I'm capturing. Now this is an ideal circumstances. What I just showed you would involve three network taps, which physically go in line on the cable and divert that traffic over to an analyzer where I capture it from. But let's be honest, not all of us have access physically to these connections. We can't just break them in broad daylight and three taps in three locations is a tall order. So the next thing we could do if we don't have physical access to the network, we can't break it in broad daylight and we don't have a bunch of taps lying around is we could make use of span or monitor ports. And that's where we tell the switch to send data from one interface to another interface, we'd copy it over. Now switch vendors do this in a lot of different ways, so you have to take a look at what kind of switches you have in order to be able to configure this type of monitoring on the network. But let's just say you don't have any taps, you don't have any access to a network where you could span traffic over to an analyzer, what do we do then? Well, in those cases, we might just start by installing Wireshark directly on the client and getting a perspective from the client side. That's a simple way to start capturing. Uh, we're not worried about a lot of other users, but we're able to see from this client's vantage point what it is experiencing with that server. Now we wanna take this with a grain of salt. Because we're installing Wireshark on an active system that is having a problem, we wanna take into consideration that we're adding a bit of load to this client, and also we're capturing from the packet driver perspective on that client. So there might be some funny things that we see in terms of timing or internal perception of packet size inside that box. 
but we'll go into those details on another video. The point is this is a quick and dirty way that many people begin an analysis simply by installing Wireshark directly on the endpoint under test. However, preferably, we want to try to capture it on the network itself, either on a tap as close as possible or off a span port. Now on the server side, we could try our best to get a simultaneous server side capture. That's what I always try to do. My goal is I want to see it from several vantage points, at least client and server simultaneously. What that does is it allows me to see, for example, a TCP SYN. I can see a SYN come in. I can see it arrive at the server. I can see the server respond, and I can see that hopefully that SYN act come back. I get a lot of timing information, and I can also see any backend transactions that that server has to have with databases or other servers involved in the application. However, this is where I got to really think about my environment. Where is this server located? What kind of access do I have to it? Should I use a virtual tap? Should I use a virtual span? And one thing I strongly recommend against, if at all possible, is installing Wireshark directly on that server. I, let's think about it. That server is already busy doing a lot of things. We want to be careful about adding to its load while it's already trying to serve a lot of different users and other services. So only do this if you have very good control over that server and you have a very clear picture of its present resources and how busy it is. So where do we install Wireshark? It all depends. What is our goal of analysis? Are we troubleshooting a problem? Well, what we want to do is get as close as we can to each endpoint, client and server, and get a simultaneous capture if at all possible. And if at all possible, we don't want to do it physically on those endpoints. We want to get as close as possible, either with a tap or span off the network, if we have control to it. Now, in other cases, if we're troubleshooting security incidents or something like this, well, then we would want to take a look at the pipe coming in from the network. We want everything on that connection going over to Wireshark. We want as much visibility as possible to be able to see traffic coming and going. So hopefully this gave you a few ideas of where to install Wireshark when you're using it for analysis and troubleshooting. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you on another video.